So I've been using the uh, the Purina Aquamax 500 for my koi, and um, it's a very affordable fish food. It's um, the size is appropriate in my opinion at a three sixteenth of an inch, so that's be like like four millimeter or so, and um, the price is only be about fifty five dollars to sixty dollars, um, depending on where you get them from. On the tractor and supply company, you know, you'll notice that uh, it's about fifty-five dollars. But um, they are a little bit further away from me, and then sometimes I just don't drive by to pick it up there. So uh, I end up buying it from my local feed store, which is uh, about sixty dollars. Uh, now this fish food is uh, made primarily out of fish meal, right? Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, fish meal is the number one ingredient. So when you look at the list of ingredients on it, the first thing that shows up is fish meal. Uh, fish meal is basically just ground of fish, you know. So uh, the aquatic protein is the number one ingredient, which for me was important because uh, you know fish live in water, so um, the protein coming from the water source is always a good thing. Um, now, this f food is actually made for. Uh, carnivorous fish so it's high protein and high fat um, now for people who are into the koi hobby they will probably laugh at the fact that I'm using this food or they will criticize that it's incorrect um, and you know to some extent um, their argument can be right I mean it really just depends on how you view the fish and how you view what the fish eat right like if uh, koi are omnivorous so they eat a combination of you know plants and veggies and uh, and and aquatic uh, food uh, animals so I think that this fish uh, food is a couple of percentage high in terms of the fat I think most of the um, uh, quality Japanese brand fish um, food you'll see that the fat content is um, under 10% like for example this one right here is made by JPD and um, the protein is similar at 40% and their protein uh, primary source is also fish meal but the content for uh, the fat is only 8% um, so this is probably formulated more for like a high quality type of hobbyist who wants to grow um, koi for the show they want to maintain that perfect coloration they want to have the best possible ingredients for the food and so there's a huge difference for example um, this box right here or this bag here is gonna cost you $253 for 15 kilograms so that's about 33 pounds right um, whereas the Purina one only costs $55 for 50 pounds um, and so it really just depends on where you are in the hobby and how much budget you have and what you're willing to spend on the koi and the koi fish itself um, in terms of growth in my pond the Aquamax 500 which is what this one is um, I've noticed you know tremendous growth and and I think that is a con uh, you know a con contribution f uh, from the obviously the food and high protein but also you know keeping the water quality good and then also uh, making sure that you have a lot of tr water turnover and water flow um, so if you can't really swing for the expensive food like the sake hickory stuff um, or the J JPD type of food then what you should do is spend more time in trying to improve the water quality so that you can get the most out of the more affordable food I think that if you were buying you know coins that cost maybe like less than five hundred dollars a piece and you just want to grow them out and see how they look and and then see whether or not they can grow uh, to be decent then it makes sense to spend more time in making the water and keeping the water great um, compared to spending like two to three hundred dollars for a bag of koi food but that's just my opinion you know um, maybe in the future when I get more into the hobby and become more um, more you know hardcore with with the way I perceive things then maybe I will open up my wallet and let myself spend money on this kind of food um, but for now I'm pretty happy with this one um, this Aquamax 500 right here uh, it floats 
it's uh, at the perfect size, like 3 16th of an inch, so it's smaller than a quarter of an inch. And any fish that's about 4 inch or above, when you buy at the, the local dealer, you know, like they, they typically stock them at around 4, 5, 6 inches and above, they should be able to, to eat this. Um, the, the food itself, uh, um, it floats. Now, if you throw in a handful, then, you know, a little bit of it will sink, like, you know, like 2, 3% of it will, will you, you'll see it slowly sink. Um, but the majority of it will stay afloat. Um, it doesn't break up in the water, causing the water to become murky. Uh, I know this because I feed them with my auto feeder, and uh, I feed them 15 times a day. And uh, every day I feed like like a kilo or so of food. Um, so I go through a bunch of these bags, you know, so far this year. And the fish grows really well. The water doesn't, doesn't go crazy. Um, I haven't changed my water in over a month um, because I've been using uh, potassium permanganate to help with that as well uh, in addition I have a rotary drum filter which greatly helps um, but in terms of the food itself um, it floats it doesn't break down and then when the fish eats it um, they don't have a problem eating it they, they seem to just you know eat it just like any other kind of food um, and also when they poop what you'll notice is that it um, the poop actually comes out you know um, in a, a, a sausage like uh, form so they're not having diarrhea they're not going all over the all over the place uh, they're not pooping and then it clouds up the water um, it just they just poop these solid foods uh, I'm sorry the, they poop out solid waste and it just drops straight to the, uh, the bottom of the pond and it gets cleaned out um, so that to me is uh, is important you know, you want the food to stay, to be wholesome when they when it gets in the water, and then to kind of be wholesome when it gets out as well. Um, so uh, I feel like I've had a lot of luck with this fish uh, food. It's uh, pretty affordable. Now going into the winter, I'll be changing it out to something a little uh, less dense in protein and lower in fat because you know the winter the fish just kind of need to relax and let their liver and body recover. So. Uh, uh, it's really unnecessary to feed them at this high protein and high fat but um, from the fall well I should say from uh, late spring up until the end of um, or the middle of fall I think this fish food is okay for me um, I've only started using it when I have my new pond which was back in early March so um, I don't have like years and years of experience to see how this food will impact the fish but uh, I'm hoping that uh, it continues to show the fish being able to grow um, be healthy and uh, you know just with just about any koi you know there's always that very variable where they can lose their color they can uh, have other things that happen that may or may not be attributed to the food some people will say oh this food allows this fish to uh, grow faster and doesn't lose its color um, I'm not so sure I don't have the data to really back that up I've seen fish in my pond lose color I've seen them gain color I've seen them grow with a belly I've seen them grow big and long um, so to me like if anything the genetic of the fish is probably the most important thing rather than uh, simply the food uh, I think more time should be spent on improving the water quality and filtration um, and perhaps you'll be able to get away with using more affordable food uh, but once again um, this is a highly uh, sensitive topic when it comes to you know the hobby so everyone's got their own opinion on it. I'm just basically showing the food that I found that happens to be affordable and that I feel like uh, has shown results in my pond um, long term wise I think that feeding food that's high in protein high in fat is generally not a good idea so after the fish has grown to a size that you think is appropriate uh, maybe going into the fourth year or, or so uh, probably dial back and get something a little more um, less dense in energy and fat that way you know the fish will just be able to kind of um, just eat it digest it and just gain a little bit slower because at at that age they probably not gonna grow a lot more 
I mean, they'll always continue to grow, but they're not just going to grow massively like compared to the first three years. Um, so uh, if anything, I think the Koi Keeper should keep an open eye on um, an open mind with regards to the fish food. Don't just go by what you hear on the YouTube videos of people, especially Koi dealers telling you this food, uh, this food is the best. This food, you know, I see apps, I see great results because of this food. I mean, yes. Um, if I had the willingness to spend $250 to $300 um, on a bag of koi food and the budget for it, then yes, I would, you know, I don't mind buying that compared to buying something like this. But if you're just mostly in that 99% of the hobbyists who buy koi that costs under $500 and you want to keep them growing, but you don't want to, you know, break the wallet, then definitely keep an open mind on this particular brand. I know this brand is known for making dog and cat food. Um, and probably a lot of people would look down on it simply because it's Purina. But for 50 to $60 for a 50 pound bag and uh, the protein comes from an aquatic source, I think it's a pretty good deal. So uh, don't be afraid to give it a try. I mean, I've seen results in my pond um, and uh, I don't mind at all. I, I think it's the most affordable one that I can find right now that uh, has what I'm looking for. So uh, give it a try and uh, see how it goes.